Welcome to Successful Toy Podcast, where we shine a light on the positive side of every journey. Our platform is dedicated to celebrating the success stories and unique experience of people from all walks of life, regardless of their fame or background. Whether you're a well-known figure or just starting out, the Successful Toy Podcast is here to share your story and inspire other listeners with your achievements and insights. Join us as we explore a diverse range of topics and uplift voices that deserve to be heard. Everyone has a story to tell and we're here to listen hey y'all hey so i'm back happy fourth of july for those that celebrate fourth of july but i'm here today with an interview and i'm here with v v let the people know about you well uh i happen to be an author i have an, an unpublished author for starters and I've written a book on how to solve problems. And that's what, what I would like to share with our audience today. Yeah, so we're going to get into his business without getting into his business, but get into his business. So are you ready for these questions? Oh, yes, yes, I am. Okay, let's get into it. And to, wait, before we start, today's episode is sponsored by Shiesty Apparel. Make sure you guys follow them on Instagram at shiesty.apparel. Check them out, Black on Business. Okay, so what inspired you to develop your method for solving problems and making good decisions? See, what actually happened is during my corporate career, I encountered countless problems. And what I needed to do was to actually get away of how I can solve problems. But then the difficulty was that I bought all the books and I read all the books, you know, from Edward de Bono and all those guys and actually found out that they did not really give me exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a step-by-step process of how I can solve a problem or problems that I had. And that's when I decided to develop all, to develop all these stops all by myself. And it took me about nine years. Oh, okay. Can you briefly outline the easy steps you've created for solving problems? Okay, the easy, uh, I mean, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, if you look at problems, we all have problems in our personal, prof- mm-hmm. professional, and our business lives. But then the thing is, uh, do we really know how to go about solving these problems? Let's start off by defining what the problem is. We quantify the problem and then we give it a definition. We say, look, uh, in fact, in my book, which has, which is going to be published in the next three months, is this guy who had actually been fired at work. And this guy was now sitting at home. He didn't have a job. And he was saying to himself, what am I going to do? So he defined his problem as I've been fired. I said, that is the wrong way of defining a problem. You must define a problem as I am looking for a way to earn a living, you know, and Mm. you do it in a way which is forward looking, which is empowering, which is concise, which is non delusional, but then it actually takes you forward because if you say I've been fired, the thing is you're now looking back and you're looking, it takes you back to the time when you were fired. And obviously that actually brings about lots and lots of emotions. So you start off by defining a problem properly. Then from there on, the second one is you actually write what the issues are regarding that problem. What are the issues? I mean, say, suppose if you've been fired, you actually got a mortgage to pay, you've got bills to pay, you actually got, I mean, things are expensive. So the thing is, it's important for you to actually say, to list exactly what the issues are. Then from there on, After those two steps, the next steps is about you, the person with the problem. Because every time I've actually found out that we are very good at looking at problems and we we only focus on the problems themselves. And I'm saying, no, no, take a step backwards and look at yourself. For starters, do you qualify emotionally to tackle the problem? Are you angry? Are you embarrassed? Are you feeling guilt or whatever? Define that and you say to yourself, what is my emotional state? What is my mood for me to be able to deal with the problem? Because if you don't look at how many people have made decisions 
hasty decisions just because they happened to be emotionally unstable. Yeah. So you have to look at yourself and assess yourself. Then from there on, you can actually then go to the next step, which is, do you qualify? Do you have the skill? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the, 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 the attributes? Do you have the tools? Do you have the techniques? Do you have the resources? Because if you look at that the problem, is true. you must actually then look at yourself to actually say, "Am I?" it's like right now, if I were to go up against Mike Tyson, I wouldn't have a chance. Right. But if I were to have my own self-assessment, look at myself and actually say, listen, listen I'm up to it. Or wherever I've actually got a gap, that's where I can say, okay, I've got a gap. I've got to go to the gym. I've got to look for a, for, 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 for a trainer. I've got to go to, you know, do whatever is required so that I can get to a point whereby I can stand toe to toe with a problem. Mm -hmm. So that and is I, I understand that too, because I, sorry to cut you off, but I understand that because I've been fired from a job and like you said, sit back and analyze the problem. And I was the problem because I literally had control of the situation, but I let anger take control. Mm -hmm. So I definitely get it and understand what you're saying. And that is exactly what the problem. So the problem that we're sitting with is half the time we are busy focusing on the problem itself and we never stop to think about who we are. What are we doing? What is our level, our emotional uh, uh, state? And what is our mood? Because that in itself, it influences the way how you, it influences the decisions you're going to take next. And that is where the issue is. Mm -hmm. Got you. How do these steps differ from traditional problem solving methods? Well, I'm not really sure about other traditional, um, so, because you see, my steps, are the following. I deal with four things. The very first one is, um, how can I put it, thinking. The next one is problem solving. The next one is decision making. And the next one is actioning the decision that you will have taken. Taking action. Okay, let's start with thinking. Now, everybody has got, I mean, we all have uh, three kinds of, in fact, let me put it this way. There's a lower level thinking and there's a higher level thinking. What is low level thinking? Low level thinking is when you think intuitively and when there's what we call pattern thinking, whereby I fall back on my previous experience, then I start acting to actually say, oh, look, I've seen this thing before, I can actually start acting. I know exactly what I've done before. But the problem is that that experience, the previous experience you, that you've got, is not exactly what is required here. And you don't even sit back to test it, to find out exactly if that is the method that you're required to apply. That is important. Now, if you think um, there is the intuitive thinking and there's a pattern thinking, that is, those are the low-level thinking patterns. But then the next one, which is important, is the reflective thinking. Now, that is where 1%, I mean, 1% of the people in the world, that's exactly what they do. They think reflectively. And reflective mm -hmm. thinking means that you say to yourself, okay, first of all, I've defined exactly what my problem is. And the next step is you ask yourself, what, what qualifies you to deal with that problem? Let's actually go to the problems. The problem is, the very first one is you're dealing with beliefs. We've got our own limiting beliefs as human beings, all of us. Mm -hmm. So you have to question your beliefs. The second one is you have to question your biases because we are all biased in one way or the other. Right. The next one is question your preferences. What are those preferences that you've got? The next one is, what are your perceptions pertaining to those kind of problems? The next one is, what 
is your stereotype. Because no, normally what people do is they look at something and they are stereotyp I mean, in a stereotypical way. They look at things and already they've actually made up their mind how exactly they are going to be dealing with a situation. And I'm saying question your stereotypes, question your prejudices. Then if you question all that, then that's where you can, in fact, my system is to go step by step to understand I've now defined the problem and I say, what is my bias? What's my belief? What's my preference? What's my prejudices? What's my stereotypes? And all those kind of things. I put it down there for me to have a look at them. Mm-hmm. And I will then say to myself, look, say there are situations where, I mean, let's actually stay with the situation of somebody who's been fired at work. Then when you look at this, you might turn around and say, you know what? I'm now looking for a way to earn a living. But the problem is, I don't want to work for Jewish guys, or I don't want to work for black guys. I don't want to work in Africa. I don't want to work in Canada. I don't. So those are the preferences. And those particular preferences can actually hold you back from solving your problem. Mm. So meaning that you must actually ventilate all those little preferences that you've got and all those biases and beliefs and all that. I mean, I've known of people, when you say to them, look, have you tried looking for a, for a job at such, such a place? They turn around and say, ah, no, man, you know what? I mean, I'm from South Africa. And somebody might turn around mm-hmm. and say, that company is too white. You know, I tell you what, they won't hire me because I'm black. I've seen those kind of things. We experience these kind of, those kind of things every day where you reject yourself. You haven't been rejected by the institution. You just reject yourself. And what Because the way you're thinking. Because exactly. the way you're thinking. Exactly. So my, and you never know. You could be the first person. You could be the first black person that they hire. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. what I'm saying is you have to ventilate all these issues that you're dealing with so that you can actually then find out what's your biases, what are issues, what your, what your preferences are, and so forth. In fact, there are some people who will not want to work in the rural areas. They actually want to work in urban areas because those are preferences. And guess what? You could actually make a better living on the land, in the rural areas, somewhere far out from the city. That's possible. But yeah. you're busy closing your... You, you, you actually close it because of these limited beliefs or because of the way how you think that would go a long way in being a stumbling block. So meaning that the problem in itself is not the problem. You will turn out to be the problem. Mm-hmm. So you're stopping, you're stopping your own growth with the way you're thinking. Exactly. I like that. I like that. <laughs> See, people, you got to change the way you think. And exactly. it's crazy because I have, I've learned that within myself too, because I too, I used to be a negative thinker. Like, oh, I used to be that person. Oh, I'm not going to, they ain't going to hire me. They all gonna hire. Oh, I can't do that because I stopped thinking that and start applying myself. And it's what's for me is for me. So you stopping your own blessing because you never know if, that the route that you're supposed to take in life that to be that first black person for that all white company. But if you think in the way you're thinking, you're never going to open that door because you feel like they're not going to hire you. That is so the I problem. totally get it. I understand it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this, I like but, that. But, so the important thing about this whole thing uh, about the processes is to go step by step where you start opening. Because what normally happens is I get fired at work and I jump around. I'm thinking of, uh, I've got to update my CV. I've got to phone my that. But then if you sit back and you say, step one, I'll do this. Step two. So in my book, what I'm actually doing is to say step by step to ensure that you don't miss out anything. Mm-hmm. And okay. that is that is the important. This is how I did it when I was busy uh, solving my problems, and I actually found out that it actually did work for me in the in the mm-hmm. eight nine years that I was actually using the the steps. I like and I, we are... I, I went on to help out other people as well, and this is well what and I we're going to make a living. difference. 
And we're going to make a difference. We're going to make a difference. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. These questions are good. I'm loving this episode. We're learning new things, a new way of thinking, you guys. Like we have to stop thinking so negative and think positive. What's for you is for you. So we're going to get into this song. It's called Ab Libs by Keep Loaded Dunn and featuring two capital. That boy to capital. Shout out, nigga. Shout out to that nigga. The Don. The Don. I be quick to make a move like an audible and mad. I got shit to prove. I got shit to lose. Can't be grooving with no bad. Remember, I was lost in the sauce nowadays. Man, it costs to be taught in this evil world. Mm. Had me clueless. I ain't feel my nose up, but I roll a dude. Chasing ruby rolls, cause I'm chasing rubies. By my mama house, for I buy myself some rubies. No, these ain't no distress sick news, no depressed mental. That chin talk, nigga, lift your chin up, nigga, poke your chest out, nigga, let your fist talk, nigga, put that switch down. Tell me if you still a man when you got that switch down. Tell me if you still a man when you ain't got your bitch round. Tell me if you still a man when you ain't got that brand round. Tell me if you still a man when you ain't got no buzz in town. Put his chest out, then he get it caved in. I just met a bust down, met her at the day's end. I only get a fiend, fire rocks like a caveman. Throwing ones in the club, she gon' do the rain dance. I ain't talking pop rocks, we don't do the loud talk. We ain't mugging in the club, that's gon' get a op drop. Pouring lean up in my soda, all you see is great drop. I remember when we used to trip up off our mama's spot. We got birds by the flock, you want know chickens come and shop. Gotta call me before you pull up, you can't show up and just knock. Niggas think I'm blind, but my third. I beat the plot. If you run up on me, you gon' meet the hollows in the block. I be to make a move like an audible and mad. I got shit to prove. I got shit to lose. Can't be grooving with no baddies. Remember, I was lost in the sauce. Nowadays, man, it costs to be taught in this evil world. Mm. Had me clueless. I ain't feel my nose up, but I roll a dude. I ain't chasing ruby rolls, cause I'm chasing rubies. Buy my mama house, for I buy myself some rubies. Buy my mama out. Yes, that was Keep Low the Dawn with Ab Liz. So we kind of like got into um, the thing of changing the way you think and things like that. Someone um, left a comment. They said, the way you think determines your success. That is so true. And they also said, Change the way you think and you will change your life. That is so true. true. That is so true. So my next question is, I think we kind of said it a little bit, but you probably have some more. What are the key skills that people need to successfully implement your problem solving steps? We know change your, the way you're thinking. We know that one. What, what, okay, the other thing is, um, there's one thing that I actually wanted to mention as well. Uh, here, we should be talking about what I would like to call the TAR index. What is a TAR index? It's a T-A-R. T stands for teachability. How teachable are you? Now, how do you measure teachability? It, it's actually two variables. The very first one is, your willingness to learn. The second one is your willingness to change. How willing are you? The next one is, the A stands for accountability. Do you take accountability for your life? Mm. And the R, the R stands for responsibility. So the TAR index, you must measure it. Because if you've got a problem, People who don't take responsibility, who don't take accountability, do you know what they will do? They will turn around and blame someone or something. And I'm saying, as long as you are busy blaming somebody else, you are nowhere near where the solution is. Mm -hmm. 
We got a lot of that in the world. A lot of people don't take accountability, boy. You know, so what I'm basically saying is that if you look at your teachability, because when if you're teachable, you're willing to learn and you're willing to change because there are certain people who are set in their ways. If you set in your ways, you are limiting the possibilities of you taking advantage of any situation or opportunity which comes up. So you have to find out right up front, how teachable are you? How much do you take responsibility for anything? How much do you take accountability for anything? That in itself will take you a long way. Oh, I am tar honey. I am teachable. I take accountability and I respond. Oh, hmm. thank God for change. Thank God for change. Thank God for change. Thank God for change. Because if you knew me back in the days, Jesus, that was a hard hit, a little something. Okay. They said no. sometimes change is necessary. Breaking the Silence podcast says sometimes change is necessary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You're right. And so, they, they also said, I love that. How teachable are you? There is that there is that word again, accountability. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yes. So the next thing is <clears throat> I must actually then talk about problems. Because what normally happens is that in 99, in nine out of ten situations, what we experience. There are secondary problems. They are not primary problems. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I get fired at work, right? And I will think getting fired is the problem. Well, yes, it is a problem, but it's a secondary problem. Behind that problem is a primary one, the one which caused me to be fired. So while I'm looking for a job, while I'm looking for a way of earning a living, the important thing is that I must also, while I'm addressing the immediate problem that I'm actually sitting with, I must also address the primary cause. I'll give you a good example. Say, suppose if you were to be down with influenza and you say to yourself, oh, I've got a cough, I'm sneezing, I'm this, and you're down, you've got a headache and all that. Well, that's, well that in itself, the influenza itself, it's a secondary problem. The primary problem is the fact that your immune system is weak. So while you are tending to the current problem that you've got in terms of the influenza, you must also at the same time think of how, what is it that you need to do to improve your immune system? Because if you don't, after some time, you're actually going to go back into the problem again mm. of experiencing the influenza. So what I mean is, whatever problem, say, suppose if you get fired, you get fired, yes, but then what you must actually understand is the fact that maybe your attitude caused you to get fired, but currently, you're now looking for a way to earn a living. You're now looking for a job. Right. So you have to resolve that. But at the back of your mind, you must actually know that the reason why I got fired was is because I was arguing with my boss or I stole or I did whatever else you did. So you must, for every problem that we experience, the, it's a secondary problem, but just behind it, there is a primary problem, which is part and parcel of the root cause. Hmm. So that is important. So when y'all get fired, them people ain't fire y'all for nothing. Why y'all always be talking about, oh, I got fired for nothing. No, you got fired for something. <laughs> there is something. <laughs> it's you the problem. You the problem. You, ain't, you don't want to take accountability. You the problem. Um, Breaking the Solid Podcast said, your action affects your life. This is why you have to elevate yourself. Amen. 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 Can you can you share a real life example of someone who improved their quality of life using your problem solving steps? Oh yes. Uh, well, there was one little a little company. I mean, a friend of mine had well, a friend of a friend of a friend. Uh, he heard about this. Uh, 
of, of my, my, my method that I use. Then I went up to him. His business was failing. He didn't actually know what to do. It's just a small business with about eight people. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, okay, let's sit down. Let's actually analyze these things. And I took him through the process. And the interesting thing is he was losing money. And he was saying his employees, they are stealing. And this, I mean, he, he was actually making all sorts of accusations. But what we actually found out at the end of the day, it wasn't really all those things that he was accusing people of. The issue is he was not using the right strategies to get his business out of where it was. Mm. So we are then identified in terms of these problems to actually say, okay, because what I do is I sit down, we get a sheet of paper, then we say, okay, we, we write step by step to actually say, okay, how many problems have you got here? I'm losing money, the costs are too high, the start in the other productivity is too low, and all those kind of things. I said, no, okay, 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 that's fine. So let's take one problem at a time and let's actually dissect it and actually see exactly what the issues are. And it's not until when we took the step-by-step -step, uh, action that we found out that uh -uh, the problem wasn't where he thought it was. The problem was actually with him and his strategy. That's when, <laughs> that's when we did. Because what I actually found out is for the past, what well, I think they engaged me after about three, four months when the guy was actually having problems. And I actually found out that the whole time he was actually knocking on the wrong door. He was busy working on things he should not be working on at all. And that Ooh. was the problem. <laughs> oh, see, these the owners, they don't be thinking, they be feeling like it's the employees problems and they don't be the employees, they be them too. It's something you're lacking in your own business. Yes. Ooh. So defining the problem and understanding exactly where the problem is that's important mm -hmm. so most of the time we think we know the problems intuitively we turn around and said oh no i know the problem no no you don't if you go through my process you will understand that this is the problem and you 100 percent understand that this is exactly where i am and this is exactly what's causing the company to or the business to bleed mm -hmm. And hmm. that's one example of what I actually did with this guy. And he actually started, he changed his strategy. The good thing is he was teachable. He started working on different things. And guess what? Voila. He ended up with a better business some four, five, six months later. And did he take accountability as soon as you told him what the problem was? Uh, he was yes. still trying to blame others. Well, look, I told him that there is no trophy for blame storming. And he understood that. He understood mm -hmm. that. Because I actually said to him, look, you can blame all you want. You're still sitting with a problem. You are actually getting, exactly. you're sitting on a business which is actually slipping away from you. Slowly but surely. And he says, yeah, well, okay, what should I do? I said, look, let me guide you. Give me a little bit of some time and I'll take you to, well, if my process doesn't work, that's fine. But at least you have tried something which is different because you have been trying your own process and your own method and it hasn't been working for the past few months. Mm -hmm. And he used mine and yeah, we we're actually quite lucky that it worked. <laughs> Not quite lucky. <laughs> what common mistakes do people make when attempting to solve problems and how do your steps address these mistakes? See, what, what people do is that they will be too emotionally involved. You have seen people who are breaking up and when people are breaking up, there are lots of emotions around. If the business is failing, there are lots of emotions. You know, foreclosure, you know, the, the, the sheriff of the court is actually knocking at your door. He actually wants to take your furniture. He wants to take your kids. He wants to take your, you know, and stuff like that. So I'm basically saying, hey, you know what? You need to have a cool head. And what, I mean, how do you achieve a cool head? Is first of all, to have a process. And secondly, to have a therapy. What do I call a therapy? A therapy is when you realize 
what is your emotional state and what is it that you can do to reduce your emotional state to a place where you can start thinking rationally. Different people do things differently. Some people pray, some people cry, some people do breathing exercises, other people do meditations, other people read the Bible or whatever uh, scriptures they've got and all those kind of things. You have to know what works for you in, right. in, so that you can reduce your emotional state so that you can think clearer. That you need. We have known of people who are emotionally involved and they made decisions and those decisions, obviously they turned out to be the wrong decisions that they made. So you have to keep check on what is your emotional state and what do you think? I mean, are you really sure that your emotional state would facilitate your a clear thinking where you can go step by step by step? That is important. I love that. We're going to take a quick break while y'all marinate on that. And this next song I'm going to play is called Chapel Chapel by Keblo the Don. Fire in the fucking booth. Fuck a nigga. Keep all the motherfucker down. I'm in this bitch glitching right now and I'm feeling myself. Hey. Fuck around the hole. We gon'. Mmm. Chopper, chopper. Let's get it. Fuck around the hole. We gon' run them down. Put a soul in the air and put his body in the ground. Chopper, chopper. I was off the finish. Off, but you gon' trip or you gon' drown. If a nigga says up, I'ma take his ass down. Fuck around the hole. We gon' run them down. Put a soul in the air and put his body in the ground. Chopper, chopper. I was off the finish. Off, but you gon' trip or you gon' drown. If a nigga says up, I'ma take his ass down. If a nigga say it's smoked, I'ma tell him pass the hookah. On the interstate where yo got me looking down for troopers. And these niggas can they ball them, but ain't never seen them hooping. Only trusting my day one. We ain't doing no recruiting. If your money speak with me, you ain't doing no recruiting. Talk about a refund, make my niggas go and shoot. That nigga bread the computer, cause I swear he always booted. Hey, yeah, yo, shad, then I'm Kobe, watch me fucking alley oop it. I go stupid, I go dumb, all up in your bitch coochie. Put my thumb in the bun while I'm pulling on the bun. I'm the one, she know I'm not the two, nor the three, but I'm front of three. It's gonna take a whole lot of money to get rid of me. Fucking kill his kids, bitch, we chopping down the family tree. Chop a chop up, make a beautiful noise, ooh, say to me. You'll be on monkey bars and you niggas still can't hang with me. Rada, rada, chata, how I'm feeling off the beanie wings. Fuck around the hood, we gon' run him down. Put a soul in the air and put his body in the ground. Chop a chop a hours off the finish, off cause you gon' drip or you gon' drown. If a nigga says up, I'ma take his ass down. Fuck around the hood, we gon' run him down. Put a soul in the air and put his body in the ground. Chop a chop a hours off the finish, off cause you gon' drip or you gon' drown. If a nigga says up, I'ma take his ass down. Yes, that was Chopper Chopper by Keblo the Dunn. So our next question is, how do you suggest people integrate your problem solving steps into their daily routines? Okay, um, in the daily routine, I would actually suggest the following. Uh, I would like people to be aware of the fact that at any given point in time, we don't think reflectively. What does it mean? There are times when we are thinking, um, we, we're not really thinking at a higher level. And that's okay. We don't actually have to think at a higher level all the time. No, that's not important. But there comes a time where we have to think at a higher level. We must actually take time out on a daily basis to, to reflect and to think. Well, every day we, we, we encounter all sorts of problems, all, all sorts of issues. Uh, those we can, you know, we can deal with intuitively. That's not a problem. But I think everybody should actually sit down with their journal and say, okay, what is it that I'd like to think about? If you're thinking about your goal or resolving, resolving a certain problem which has been bugging you for the past, what, 
month or weeks or whatever, you have to take time out and alone time where you actually all you are actually all by yourself and you sit back and say, how am I going to deal with this? And while you're thinking of that, the important thing is you have to generate ideas of how you can resolve that problem. So when you generate ideas, don't think uh, in a complicated way. Sit down in a relaxed mood and in a relaxed fashion and you start making notes about how you can... In fact, you actually write at the top of the page, you say, what if? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if? And you actually write something like about 5, 10, 15, or even 20 ideas. And you hmm. just... I mean, after about 10 minutes of having done that, you can actually just walk away. But you should be taking a look at that piece of paper the following day. You sleep over it and you look at that piece of paper and you say to yourself, oh, gee, what was I thinking here? Oh, what was I thinking here? Because that is the way how people generate ideas. You wow. do it with, without even thinking. With, because sometimes we, we, we are... We, we are we are very quick to say, somebody kind of walks up to you and says, how about this? And you say, no, 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 that won't work. Write all the things which you think are stupid. Can you, can you imagine the Wright brothers when they actually started flying? Those guys, when they went up to some of their friends and said, look, can we fly or can we manufacture a vehicle to fly? Somebody would have actually said, ah, nonsense, get away. That will never happen. Yeah. But guess what? That actually did happen. Today, people are actually flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. So what I'm basically saying is on a daily basis, take half an hour or even 15 minutes, a quarter of an hour. You sit back and you say, I would like to generate ideas regarding a particular problem. And don't stop to think whether these problems, I mean, these ideas are stupid or not stupid. Don't worry about it. Just write them down write up to 10 or 15 or 20 ideas then from there on you walk away you don't even think about about those uh, about those ideas and that's what people should be doing i like that idea because like you say when you write it down then you come back and you be like now why was i thinking that like that is so stupid <laughs> see exactly. me doing that now, now why the fuck did i write this down that is so stupid like I'm doing that. <laughs> Stretch that off the list. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What what role does mindset play in effective problem solving and how can one cultivate a positive mindset? Okay. A positive mindset. Let's actually start. What is a positive mindset? My mindset. Me. Uh, well, besides you. <laughs> okay. let, let, let me put it this way. You know, unfortunately, we, I mean, human beings are negatively charged. We see problems where none exist. That is, we are just like that. We see doom and gloom. That's just who we are. Now, step number one you should be aware of the fact that naturally we see lots and lots of problems where none are. That is the way how we are. Just, it's just, the, in fact, the reason, okay, let me just go back. Human beings, we were never really, we were never really meant to deal with complicated things. We were meant to deal with simple things. And one of the simple things are survival you know from the caveman and when we are coming out of you know we we used to you know we, we used to identify danger when it was miles away and would run mm. we knew exactly how to survive so meaning that our mindset looks out for certain things to actually say oh gee am i not going to get injured am i not going to get hurt am i not going to get killed we are very quick to see risks we are very quick so what is important is to understand the fact that that is how we are by design because we have to survive however you, after having realized that that is how we are by design you will then have to turn around and say you know what 
I would like to see an opportunity in everything that happens. Understanding the fact that in the universe, there's what we call in physics, we actually call it the first law of equilibrium, whereby in Chinese, they call it the yin and the yang, meaning that wherever there is a positive, there will be a negative. And the reason why anything exists is because its opposite exists. And one of my one of the classes that I was actually doing, I I I, I ran an idea, and and I don't know why what actually came to my mind. I ran what I called the Kennedy effect. Now, what is that? Well, it's something which I just coined. Well, uh -huh. President John F. Kennedy in 1960 or 61, I think, uh, he won the presidential nomination. You know, and he actually became the president of the United States. However, that was the positive side. But now let's look at the negative. The negative was he was assassinated. So what I'm saying is the good, which he was celebrating with his family in Boston, of the fact that this is what they got, the presidency in the Kennedy family, it came with the negative of his untimely mm -hmm. death. Okay. So what I'm basically saying is what we, whatever negative you see, it becomes your responsibility to look at two things. One, any problem brings with it a key to its own solution. And secondly, any problem gives rise to things like opportunities, whereby you turn around and you look and you say, oh, you know what? I've got a problem, yes, but what opportunity is this presenting? Okay. And by doing that, it will be opening up your mindset, meaning that you will actually be opening your, 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 your mind to a positive, which might actually come out of that. So the important thing yeah. here is you have to be aware of the fact that naturally we are negative, but then it becomes your responsibility to be positive. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you, by just being aware, it can bring in, don't look at a glass as half full, no, no, uh, no, as half empty. Look at it as half full. And that is where the magic is, where we can look at our mindset and hopefully change it. It is so crazy how you're speaking on this stuff. And that's literally how I, the things that I do in my life right now, like, I always try to find the positive in everything because if something shifts in this way, it's shifting me that way for a reason. So I need to find the positive in that way of why I'm going this way so I can get on track with it. So I understand when you saying the positive, like, yeah. And it's some things that you have to do that's going to bring a lot of negative towards you. And they be saying bad publicity and good publicity, it doesn't matter. But sometimes it do because that negativity, that can tear you apart and bring you down. Everybody not built to handle negativity, but I can handle it. I'm, oh. I'm not. I, I, I will handle it. But... <laughs> But I'm I'm more positive than anything, and that's why I built this platform. Like I don't want to hear the negative things that's going on in people's life. Like I want to put a spotlight and highlight the positive things, the good things that's going on. Like we don't have that a lot, and that's what my platform is for: the positivity. Like that's what I'm with. that's what I'm for. I oh, know that's How wonderful. Can... I think mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Thank we you. need such, such kind of platforms because the, we have lots of negativity. This is why I was talking about mm -hmm. the whole world is we are just that way, wired that way of seeing negativity. But the thing is, mm -hmm. we can turn a negativity into something which actually works. I mean, one day yeah. I was actually reading, I was reading an autobiography by one guy called George Soros. Mm -hmm. It's one guy, he actually came from Budapest in Romania. And during the Second World War, the guy was Jewish and he ran away, he went to England and he couldn't speak a word of English. And what he actually then did was he was working in the, in the, in the kitchens and cleaning places and whatever. 
But that guy, mm -hmm. he had a mindset to actually say, look, I will get somewhere. He learned his English. He, he went to school. He did, you know, and right now, if you go to, to New York City, I mean, you go to Wall Street, they talk about him. Mm -hmm. Because that, that guy, he's the one guy who was one of the best traders that they actually saw in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And he came from very humble beginnings. You know? Gotta and stay humble. You got to stay humble. Exactly. Exactly. And this is what life is all about. Yeah. So how can your problem solving steps help individuals make a better decision in both their personal and professional lives? Okay. Uh, what, how my system would actually help people is one, if they are aware who they are, secondly, they are aware of what they are capable of. And the next thing is they should actually be able to, to work on leverage. What is leverage? Leverage is when you do what I would like to call a personal balance sheet, where you look at your positives and your negatives. What is a balance sheet? A balance sheet is, well, I just borrowed it from, from, from accounting, where they actually say it's assets and liabilities. Assets are those things which work for you, and liabilities are things which work against you. So what, what you're actually supposed to say is, okay, I've got this problem. What are those things which are working for me? I've got a friend. I've got this. I've got employment. I've got a, you know, a family. I've got a support system. You know, I've got people at my, at my disposal. I can talk to any time. I've got a good friend. Whatever. I've got qualifications. I've got experience. List all those things that you've got which are working for you. Mm -hmm. And you list also those things which are working against you. Then you say, okay, now that I've realized that this thing is working against me, the question is, what is it that I've got to do right now to leverage myself, to get myself to a position whereby I can get some external assistance from somebody else? Mm -hmm. And now that is important. So every time you've got a problem, there are certain things, however small they are, they are for you. And there are certain things which are against you. If you do that, you will be able to identify certain things which you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. you know? So I that's what you that. should be doing every day. Look for the pros and the cons. Mm -hmm. now that, that's going to always determine what, what you need to let go and what you need to keep. And that's their exactly. relationships and everything. <laughs> exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. I I remember me and someone I was dating, we did that. We like, let's write down our pros and our cons. And it's gonna determine if we need to keep going or let it go. And our cons outweigh the pros. And we literally walked away from each other, but we was friends, but being together, we knew that. Nah, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, but so my I question that is, years ago. how many people do exactly what you did? I don't think it's too many in the world that can literally say they did it. I don't think so. Nope, they don't. And that's yeah, the problem. But I experienced that before. Oh, that's good for you. So before we get into... <laughs> Before we get into our last and final question of today, we're going to go into our last commercial of today. And this is the last song of the show. And it's by Key Blow the Done. And it's called Who Am I? She say, Kilo, you that nigga. I'm like, who else could I be? Nigga try to back throw me, must they know I had the key. Only key pluses or rockers, I can't understand the leash. Niggas broken, getting pussy, I'm just saying couldn't be me. She say, Kilo, you that nigga. I'm like, who else could I be? Nigga try to back throw me, must they know I had the key. Only key pluses or rockers, I can't understand the leash. Niggas broken, getting pussy, I'm just saying couldn't be me. Keep all the done, I'm that nigga, most these niggas 
chicken dinners, but ain't never been no winner. Harder line, keep those simple. My heart colder than December. Do you remember way back when we were sliding in September? I remember when, yeah, yo, kept that dog food like a kennel. I remember when I had to put the bed up on them niggas. Just remember, I'm a OG, are you little niggas beginners? And I drop up in that water if you niggas not no swimmers. Niggas say he won't smoke, he must not read the warning label. All that shit, small fries, fuck a silence, juice, potatoes. And this bitch call me her father, give a force like Darth Vader. Pin her down like we rest. And she get up, put her through tables. Small step to a giant, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Y'all for being go to tweaking like this bitch on Stranger Things. Can't buy no bitch, no wedding ring unless it come with wedding bands. Riding around with case and masks like we work with Telebands. No, I cannot shake your hand if you was not talking bands. I have my mess go off your mans, then I do my touchdown dance. She say, Kilo, you that nigga. I'm like, who else could I be? Nigga try to back throw me, must they know I had the key. Only key pluses are rock, cause I can't understand the leash. Niggas broken, getting pussy, I'm just saying couldn't be me. She say, Kilo, you that nigga. I'm like, who else could I be? Nigga try to back throw me, must they know I had the key. Only key pluses are rock, cause I can't understand the leash. Niggas broken, getting pussy, I'm just saying couldn't be me. Yes, yes, yes. So we're into our final question with V. This was an amazing episode. I hope you guys learned something today because I learned a lot and it's a lot of things that are so I'm proud of myself because I'm already working on a lot of these things that we talked about today. So I'm excited for that. So the last question of today. What advice would you give to someone who feels overwhelmed by their problems and is looking for a place to start with your method? Look, um, we all have problems in our personal, in our professional, and in our business lives. We've got problems all over the place. But I think, unfortunately, you can only be at one point at any given point in time. You can't be everywhere. If you spread yourself too thin, you are actually going to have a problem. In fact, let me just give you a good analogy. In fact, I've actually got it in my book. It's about an ATC, that's an air traffic controller. Now, the air traffic controller, at any given point in time, there are aircrafts which are taking off and some are touching down and some taxiing around and all those kind of things. So, if you look at all these aircrafts, if you look at yourself as the air traffic controller and you say to yourself, look, what is that most important aircraft? Say, suppose an aircraft is coming into land and, is, and one of the engines is on fire. The question is, what is the most important aircraft for the air traffic controller? That's the one on fire. So what you should do is you should a person should be able to look at the to write a list of all their problems and say okay now if i deal with the one problem and give it all my attention the rest of the other problems will be will look secondary what is the most pressing problem the problem with many people is that we are actually trying to do too many things at the same time that does not work what you should do is focus on something which has a bigger impact in your life. So what you should do is sit down and you say, okay, make a list, maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 problems. And you say, which of these problems, if I really deal with this problem and I really get successful in dealing with it, I'm triumphant at the end of the day. The question is, which of these problems is important for you to tackle? If you do that, then the rest of the problems will be totally secondary. So look for the most pressing problem. Put on the cap of the air traffic controller. And there's one burning. This is why people talking about, they talk about a burning platform where it's burning the most. The aircraft coming into land and one of the engines is on fire. That is the most important. Don't be everywhere. Ignore the rest of the other problems. They don't really matter. Focus on that particular one. That's the advice mm -hmm. I would give. 
I love it. I love it. So I'm going to turn the platform over to you so you can talk to the audience, let them know how to find you, let them know when your book is going to be released, well, how they can purchase your book and everything else you want them to know about you. So it's your time. Oh, thank you very much. Look, uh, I mean, uh, this book is really for me, that is my biggest passion. I love it. And I've, uh, I've been talking to friends about it and I've used these methods with other people. So if you go to Facebook, I'm on Facebook. That's a VNK. That's a V double E Y E N K K A Y. And that's where you will find me. And I'm also on, on LinkedIn, but the same, uh, the same, um, the same name, V double E Y E N K. And that is exactly where you will find certain snippets of the book that I'm actually writing. I'm hoping that, you know, because it's now out of my hands, I've actually, the manuscript has been done already, is now with, with, with the editors. So the editor has got to do the manuscript evaluation and everything else, and the editing and the checking the grammatical mistakes and doing all sorts of things. But the beauty is I would like you guys to follow me on, especially on Facebook. That's where I'm very, very active. And I think we can actually interact and the book will be, I guess, uh, I'm looking at September this year. That's when the book will be available. Well, according to the editors, well, I'm not sure if they've spoken to the printers already, but I think the important thing is that you know that this is exactly this is exactly what you can get in terms of a book which has steps in terms of how you can resolve a problem. You don't actually have to look any further. The work has been done for you. I, I worked on the book for over nine years, and I'm pretty confident that the book can really assist a lot of people in their personal and their professional and their business lives to solve the many problems that people have got. So that's all. I'm not really sure if, um, let me think about something else. Oh, something else that I actually forgot. Important thing is, if you follow me on, 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 on Facebook, I'm actually going to give you a tip of how you can resolve your problem. Period. And y'all heard it here first. And I love the fact like you had an example for each. You had one for a business owner, how you help them. You had one for someone that's in a professional world, the corporate world, how you help them. And you even did it yourself. And you also have one for the personal, your personal life. So I pray that you guys took notes and got he let some good information go today. So I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your feedback. I, I appreciate your interaction, all the shares, all the likes, all the comments. Today's episode was sponsored by Shiesty Apparel. Make sure you guys follow them on Instagram at Apparel. Black-owned company trying to make it up in this world. So stay tuned and follow them for all their products and their apparel that they release. And before we get out of here, you don't go nowhere, but let's get rid of them. So we will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Successful Toy Podcast. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on YouTube and Twitch. You can also watch us on Facebook Live. If you prefer to listen, find us on Spotify, Amazon Music, Listening Notes, Samsung Podcasts, Podcast Index, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. See you in the next episode. Bye.